Hello students. Today we are going to study a chapter from Systemic Bacteriology. The Staphylococcus. These organisms belong to the family Micrococci. The various genus included in this family are Micrococcus, Planococcus, Staphylococcus. The general characteristics of Staphylococcus are these are gram positive spherical cocci, 0.5 to 1.5 micrometers in size. They divide in three perpendicular planes, so they can be found either single, pairs, or in clusters. They appear as bunches of grapes. <clears throat> These are non motile, non spore forming, non capsulated, catalase producing. Oxidase negative, glucose fermenters, coagulase positive, and primarily aerobic organisms, but some may be facultatively anaerobes. They can withstand the moist heat at 60 degrees for 30 minutes and can be killed in an hour. They can survive in dust and fomites for weeks and months. They can be killed by disinfectants, the mostly the aniline dyes, they are bactericidal. They can grow in ordinary medium. They are inhibited by high bile salt concentration. Some are beta hemolytic. And the morphology in the culture, it is buttery looking, green or white colored columns. Also, they can be grown in various salt medias like salt milk agar, Ludlam's media, Manitou salt agar, and salt broth. To enhance the pigment, the media used is milk agar or glycerol monoacetate agar. Phenolphthalein phosphate agar is the indicator medium for identification of staph aureus from mixed cultures. The ammonia vapors are exposed on the culture and you get fine pink color colonies. The staph aureus and intermediates are the human pathogens which are coagulase positive staph. Other coagulase positive staph but are animal associated are staph hycus, delphini and schleppini. Staph aureus, the, it is the primary pathogen. Habitat in the anterior nares, the carriers, state and colonization in axilla, perineum, or pharynx. They produce superficial or systemic infections and deep abscess like pus formation in wound infections is also caused by staph aureus. The usual site is skin, nasopharynx, perineum. Breach in mucosal barriers can enter the underlying tissue. Characteristic abscess with pus and bacteria also liberates toxins. So due to the organism, there can be a local effect, localized infection on the skin. Also deep abscess or systemic infections. While toxin mediated is food poisoning, toxic shock syndrome, or scalded skin syndrome. The various virulence factors of staph aureus are, which are cell wall associated. The capsule polysaccharide, it prevents the ingestion of organism by polymorphonuclear leukocytes. The protein A, which is found in the CO1-1 strain in coagulitic nation, to detect the presence of bacterial antigens in the serum, urine, and cerebrospinal fluid. It is chemotactic, antiphagocytic, anti complementary, mitogenic, and elicits platelet injury and hypersensitivity reaction. Tequoic acid is another antigenic protein which is found in the cell wall. The peptidoglycan it provides rigidity to the cell wall and stimulates the immune response in the host. The clumping factor, the bound coagulase is used for the slight agglutination test. 
the various enzymes which act to the virulence factors are catalase, coagulase, haluronidase, lipases, and beta lactamases. The various extracellular toxins are enterotoxins, toxic shock syndrome toxin, epidermolytic toxin, exotoxins, and hemolysins. The superficial infection caused by staphylococci are various skin lesions like boils, styes, furuncles, carbuncles, and wound infections. In the deep abscess, either the direct inoculation of this organism, it produces the localized deep abscess, or it is carried by the blood bacteremia and it can be single or multiple sites. Various abscess like breast abscess, the kidney, brain, bones, and it can also lead to septic arthritis. The toxin-mediated diseases are staphylococcal food poisoning, the toxic shock syndrome, and scalded skin syndrome. The staphylococcal food poisoning is caused by milk and milk products. It has a short incubation period and it is due to the production of enterotoxins, which is preformed toxin. It is heat stable. In toxic shock syndrome, high fever, diarrhea, shock, and erythematous skin rash, which desquamates. It is mediated by the toxic shock syndrome toxin and there is 10% mortality rate. The scalded skin syndrome usually seen in young children mediated through minor staphylococcal infection by epidermolytic toxin producing strains, but it has a good prognosis. The other virulence factors are the extracellular enzymes like the cytolytic toxins, which includes hemolysins, it can be alpha hemolysin, beta hemolysin, gamma lysin, and delta lysin. These hemolysins can be leukocytic, cytotoxic, dermonecrotic, neurotoxic, and can be lethal. The alpha hemolysin lyses the RBCs, damages the smooth muscle, and causes severe tissue damage. Beta hemolysin acts on sphingomyelin in the plasma membrane of the RBCs. It is a phospholipase C and acts on sphingomyelin. The gamma lysin has leukocytic activity, while the delta lysin it shows lethal dermonecrotic leukocytic activity. The extracellular enzymes which act for virulence factors helps in the spread of infection are haluronidase. It hydrolyzes the hyaluronic acid in connective tissue, allowing the spread of infection. Staphylokinase, fibrillizin, which allows the spread of infection. The coagulase, it acts as virulence marker. And lipase, it allows colonization. The beta lactamases or penicillinase confers resistance, DNA degrades to DNA, and protein A in the cell wall it binds to FC part of IgG to block the phagocytosis. The coagulase negative staph are staph epidermidis and staph saprophyticus. They are mostly the habitat of skin and mucous membranes. The virulence factor is the slime, and mode of infection is colonization of medical implants. The infections are acquired nosocomially. Serious infections are seen in the patients which are immunocompromised or in neonates. The staph saprophyticus is mostly associated with the urinary tract infection in young, sexually active. Females. For lab diagnosis, 
after the sample is received, it undergoes the microscopic examination to find out whether these are coca or bacilli. And in staph aureus, you find gram-positive coca, which are in pairs or clusters, and numerous polymorphonuclear cells are also seen. In the culture, in ordinary medium, you can find the smooth, putrous, white to yellow creamy colonies. They grow well in 18 to 24 hours. And staph aureus, it can produce hemolysis on sheep blood agar. The various identification tests are catalase test, which is positive in case of staphylococci and negative in case of streptococci. So this is the test for enzyme catalase. A drop of hydrogen peroxide is added onto the smear and you can see the bubbles. For coagulase test, which is the marker to find out the clumping factor or free coagulase. You can go for slide test or tube test. The cell bound clumping factor, it converts the fibrinogen to fibrin, which precipitates on cell A, causing agglutination. And the free coagulase, which is extracellular enzyme, can be detected by the tube test. The various antibiotics are used for the staphylococci are beta lactam group of antibiotics like penicillins, cloxacillins, ampicillin, amoxicillin. Beta lactamase producers are the treatment of choice, the amoxiclavulanic acid or ampicillin sulbactam combination or methicillin oxacillin can be used. For MRSA, the treatment of choice is vancomycin or linzulin. Thank you.